Motion graphics is a hot commodity in the 3D industry. It's everywhere. From TV to games, sports broadcasts, and live shows, if there's a screen, there's a good chance motion graphics are involved. Whether it's a title sequence, an animation for a product launch, or dynamic visuals in a sports arena, motion graphics drive attention and engagement. If you master this art, you'll never run out of gigs. Now let me tell you a secret. Blender is one of the most underrated tools for motion graphics. Many people overlook it, but Blender packs a serious punch with its physics engine, procedural tools, and creative flexibility. And best of all, it's free. Today, let me show you what Blender can do for motion graphics and give you the six key assets you need to know to pull off any animation you want. Whether you're creating a complex logo animation or crafting smooth transitions, these assets will be your new go-to tools. If you're struggling with a motion graphics project, start by creating a nice gradient background. There are several variations, but my go-to is setting a solid color for the background in the world properties. Add something like a cube or text object, then add an infinite floor, which is just a large plane. We'll make the floor look infinite using materials. Create a gradient with the typeset to spherical, then add coordinate mapping using control T. Use the object output, connect the gradient to the alpha channel, and add a color ramp for control. This will make the gradient fade into the background, making it look infinite. To make it look even better, if you're using Eevee, turn on ray tracing. The next step is usually lighting. Area lights work wonders for this type of scene because they create soft shadows and, as you'll see later, are also great for reflections. Place them where you want and experiment with the color and strength to see what you get. You don't have to follow a strict workflow, but if things don't look as good as you'd like, try using a reflective material for your object. Move the lights around to see how they reflect off the object, adjusting until you get the desired effect. Light reflections look better when you can't see where they end. To achieve this, add a camera and make it look at your target object using constraints. Then, animate the camera for some subtle motion. Also, animate the light so that the reflections move slightly and ensure you never see where the reflection ends through the camera, unless you like the way it looks. This is a great starting point, and from here, there are plenty of ways you can branch off. Let's explore some effects you can add to this scene that can also be used universally in other projects. A great effect to start with is wind using volumes. Add a cube and scale it to fit your scene. Apply a principled volume shader to the cube. Use a noise texture for the emission strength. To make the noise easier to control and look better, first subtract 0.5 from the value. You can add a color ramp to easily control the contrast of the volume. Animate the noise like wind, add coordinate mapping, and in the location input, type hashed frame slash 10 to control the speed of the noise. You can add a multiply node to adjust the strength of the effect. This creates a subtle animated wind effect that can be used in various projects. Another thing you can try is flow reflections. If we darken the scene a bit and add a grunge map to the floor's roughness, we can get some magical results. To make this work, we need something for the ground to reflect, so let's add some lights close to the ground. Since these lights are meant primarily for reflections, you can disable or reduce their influence on diffuse volumes and other effects. One last thing we can try for this project is adding particles. Create a simple object, make it highly reflective, and add a particle system that blows in the same direction as the wind effect we added earlier. Use the reflective object as the particle instance. These reflective particles always look amazing in dark scenes. Of course, you can switch the particles to something else depending on the project you're working on. Remember, these techniques are just handy tools to have in your arsenal when working on motion graphics. They aren't meant to be a strict manual on how to do motion graphics. Experiment and find what works best for your style. Be sure to randomize the rotation, scale, and, and movement of the particles for a more dynamic and natural look. Okay, that was great, but let's level up a bit for more advanced motion animation using geometry nodes. You can see that in this animation, we already have most of the things we talked about. Now let's see how to make those animated cable things. 
Set up your world as you want and add two objects. One is going to be the source of the cables and the other, the destination. Add a geometry node set up to the source and distribute points on that geometry. Import the target object into the setup and distribute points to it as well. We are going to find the positions of all the points on the target object using the sample index node. Let's go back to the source points and convert them to vertices. Then extrude those vertices and change their positions to the positions of the target points. Make sure only the extruded vertices are moved. If we convert these lines to curves now, we can increase their subdivisions and displace them using a noise texture. But we only want to displace the middle points while keeping the original positions unchanged. To do this, we will use the length gradient of each spline using the spline parameter node to change the influence of the noise. Add a color ramp to adjust where the influence should be strong, which should be just the middle area. So make the middle part of the gradient white and the endpoints black. Now let's make the lines smoother by changing the type of the curves to bezier. Add some control for the point count. Now let's give these some thickness. To animate these, use a trim curve node and set up a timeline using the scene time node to create animations. You can add materials and other effects. If you want a more detailed explanation of all of this, I am currently working on a course about motion graphics in Blender, so watch out for that. Anyway, there are a lot more tricks we can add in here, but that will be for another video. Let's keep this one short, so see you next time. If you want to check out the project files, all the links are in the description.